Hey everybody, this is Pastor Ben Lim with our show, The Breaker, where we believe that God is breaking through into your life in every sphere, every spectrum of your being. Listen, the Bible says that he is the Lord of the breakthrough ball, Parazan, so we welcome you here today. Listen, my guest, my friend, Evangelist Matt Cruz is a world-renowned, millennial, fiery evangelist, preacher of the gospel. We're so blessed, excited to have him here today. So we welcome you today, Evangelist Matt Cruz. Hey, Pastor Ben, how's it going? I'm excited to be with you. Uh, all is well, my friend. Listen, it's an honor to have you. Uh, we love you. We love your spirit, your ministry. So thank you for coming on our show today, The Breaker. And uh, today we want to talk about how to be a powerful witness of the gospel. Because so many people don't even know how to share the gospel. They're afraid uh, you know, they're stuck uh, in their old religious ways. But mm -hmm. today we want to talk about the power to become a witness. So talk to us, evangelists. What comes to your mind? Uh, what does it mean to you to be a powerful witness for Jesus? Yeah, you know, I bet I tell people that evangelism is simply your relationship with God on display in the public. You know, um, every Christian is anointed to proclaim the good news. You know, people say, I'm not called to do that. You know, I, I'm not, you know, bold enough. Or I, I like where, where I'm at right now. God has called me to do this. And they feel like they're not supposed to go out and intentionally tell people about Jesus. But you don't have to function in the office of an evangelist to evangelize. You know, sharing our faith and loving on people is the lifestyle of Christianity. So I think it's getting a... Uh, a revelation of it's not our call for everybody to accept it. It's not a responsibility for everybody to accept the truth, but it is our call to ensure that they have a chance to accept the truth. And that, that happens by us stepping out of our comfort zone, going beyond our boundaries and looking for the opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. So for me, it's simply uh, displaying your relationship with God in public and just loving people where they are. You know, and uh, I'm excited. You know, it's the, the role of the evangelist is the work of the ministry, you know, and uh, the Greek word for evangelist actually means one who announces the good news. You know, the evangelist is a reaper in a harvest field. You know, he, he operates in the law of, uh, of the sowing and reaping. So we need to we need to understand that God wants to use every Christian. If we've got the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. We are anointed to share the message of the kingdom. We just have to go out. We have to get over our fears. We have to stop being afraid of what can go wrong. And we need to start getting excited about what can go right. That's incredible. I love what you just shared there, Matt, because you said evangelo. Of course, that's where we get the word angel from. Yeah. Evangelo, angel, which means messenger. But it's a preacher, a communicator of the good news. Yeah. Come on. It's time for good news all the time because heaven only has good news. Come but on. We see right now we see so much fake news, bad news, sorry news. And, uh, you know, how important do you think it is for us to actually understand the gospel of Jesus? Because there's so many different gospels. There's false gospels. Even the Apostle Paul says that there's false gospels and false Christs out there. But how important do you think it is? for us to really understand the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we talk about how to share the gospel, it's important to understand what the gospel is. It's not a personal testimony. You know, it's not sharing a random scripture. It isn't, you know, an apologetic debate. Uh, neither is it a heated argument over theology. I often tell people that the gospel is an announcement, not an argument. You share it, not shove it. So I think it's, you know, really, again, knowing what the gospel is, it's simply the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, no, we were lost. He died. He rose again. You know, he demonstrated he's God. We turn from our sin and we trust him. That is the gospel. Uh, so I think it's really uh, knowing that our stories are not the gospel, but it can incorporate the good news. And, and also that every believer should be ready in season and out of season to to tell people what God has done in his or her life. We need to be ready to turn an out-of-season, in other words, uh, out-of-season moment into an in-season opportunity and say, I'm ready at all times to talk about the faith that I believe in and why I believe what I believe, as Paul tells us. And so people need to be ready with scriptures. They need to have the word in them and be ready at all times uh, to, to tell somebody you know, about the hope we have in Jesus and how they can come to him. So I, I think it's really just knowing what, 
what Jesus did for us. He came down and, and came to trade his perfection for our imperfection so that we might be seen as righteous before the Father. You know, Jesus uh, died as us so that we would live as him. He became our identity so that we might become his identity. You know, he came to bridge the gap between humanity and God that sin created. So it's understanding the revelation of the gospel. It's, it's, some, it's the simplicity of it, too. It's simple. What Jesus did, nobody ever did. You know, so many men wanted to become God, but only one God became man. Christianity is so different and so unique that there's nothing like it. Every other religion is about man seeking after God. But Christianity is different because it's the opposite. It's God seeking after man. And I, you know, I want to let people know who are watching this right now that the Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. You know, so when people believe in the false gods, why, why, Matt, is there so many false religions out there? I'll tell you, because the devil himself has devised and planned to blind people from the truth of God's gospel. He does not want you to believe that there's redemption and deliverance for you. He wants you to have you know, blinders on and believe a false gospel and believe there's many ways. There is not many ways. There's only one way. Jesus is not the best of several ways, nor is he you know, one of many. He is the only way. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. So, I, I, man, I think it's understanding that he is the only way. He's the only way. You know, uh, Buddha said he was a teacher of truth. Muhammad said he was a prophet of truth. But Jesus said he is the truth. He's the only way. And, uh, and I think he stands out more than any other God. They've got ears but can't hear, eyes but can't see, a mouth but can't speak. But our God has ears and can hear. He's got eyes and can see. And he's got a mouth that can speak. Glory to God. I'm thankful I serve, I serve, I serve King Jesus, man. He's the one who turns bondage into freedom, sin into salvation, darkness into light. Nobody else can do what he does. He's the only one who can save, heal, and deliver. And, uh, and when we taste and see that he's good, the rest of the world loses its flavor, man. My gosh, so good. Uh, I could feel the power of God right now uh, uh, through your preaching and through your sharing, Matt, because something happens when we talk about Jesus. Come on. Something happens when we talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Remember, so many of the guards, the Bible says in the Gospels, that the guards were bribed to give false testimony about the resurrection of Jesus. Why? Yeah, yeah. Because he fulfilled his word. It was a fulfillment of prophecy of the messianic anointing and that you and I, that we would not see or taste death. So we should not be afraid of dying, but because Jesus defeated death, now we can write him and that is the gospel. We yeah, will, yeah, yeah. But we will have eternal life. But mm -hmm. I can feel and sense the power of God right now, Matt, even as you're talking, because Apostle Paul says, we do not talk with eloquent words. But yeah. with the power of God. And whenever we talk about who Jesus is, the power of God is present. However, so many people, they talk about good facts and ideas and uh, theological, uh, you know, uh, ideas. But the mm -hmm. power of God is not present. Yeah. Why do you think that is the case in that? I think it's the case is because you will never lead people to where you are not. You know, if you're not, if you're, in other words, if you're not close with Jesus... You're not going to lead anybody there. So I think it's understanding that if we if we want to see Jesus change lives through us, we must first pour into our relationship with him. You know, not not only will we lead people to the wrong place, but it comes off as fake. You know, it's not genuine. And, uh, you know, I, I would say this. Would you trust the words of a salesperson who doesn't even use the product they are selling? Mm. Probably not because they, you know, it's not genuine. They just want a paycheck. So I think it's first pouring into your relationship with him and, and understanding if, until I'm with him, I cannot say that I know him. So it's, it's being in communion with him first, pouring into relationship with him first, and then everything you do will flow out from that place. It's just like preaching. Preaching is an outflow of what we've already experienced. You know, so uh, it's, it's really focusing on a relationship with Jesus and also understanding uh, that our culture is changing and our evangelism needs to change with it. You know, I believe, Ben, that methods that once worked will increasingly become ineffective. We need, the, we need to have a different method. The message will always remain the same, but the method needs to change. You know, when I see people downtown with signs, you know, lifted high that say Jesus or hell, repent or hell, I cringe. My heart is grieved. Although it is 100% true, it is incomplete. 
Why do I say it's incomplete? Because Jesus said, by this, everyone would know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's in John chapter 13, verse 35. You know, but I'll say this. Our love should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. A major problem with many believers today is that they try to clean the fish before they, you know, they try to clean it before they even catch the fish. We need to love people where they are. We need to love and meet them right where they are. Our job is to love people, you know, uh, without stopping to inquire whether or not they are worthy. And I, I think people also need to get this revelation that people may hate us because of Jesus, mm. but they should never hate Jesus because of us. Mm. We have to allow oh, our light to shine. That again, Matt. That was so good. Can you say that again? People may hate us because of Jesus, but they should never hate Jesus because of us. Wow, that is so good, so profound. Is that one of your original quotes? Yeah, it's in my book right here. Incredible. Your book, which we will talk about very soon. Pe yeah. People will hate us because of Jesus, but they should never hate Jesus because of us. Talk to us. Come on, man. I'm telling you, you know, uh, man, we're, I have so many things rolling through my mind here. I heard somebody say that uh, the way we treat others should lead them to only one conclusion. If this is how Jesus loves, then I'm in. We need to love people where they are. We, so, so in other words, let your love for God change the world, but never let the love for the world change your love for God. I'm going to say that again. We need to allow our love for God to change the world, but we should never let the world change our love for God. We have to walk in love. And that does not mean that we hold back from preaching the uncompromising gospel of Jesus Christ. We always need to be bold, unashamed, full of courage, full of faith, you know, full of uh, boldness. But we have to we have to carry the love of Jesus because that is what's going to get people to come to him. You know, it's the goodness of God, the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. In other words, I'm not going to come up to somebody and, you know, who's smoking a cigarette and I'm not going to just beat him up over the head, you know, saying the same thing that you're you're addicted to nicotine. Put that down. You need to stop, you know, all this stuff. How about I just love on them, give them Jesus. And once they encounter Jesus, they're not going to want to smoke that cigarette any longer. So it's about loving people where they are and, uh, and knowing that it's not an argument. It's an announcement. And we need to share it with love. So good, Matt. So good. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to demonstrate. Ah, that's so I'm good. not here to argue with words. I'm here to show you the power of God and to show you miracles and signs and wonders that's done. In fact, hear me now, people. The Bible says uh, in the Gospels that signs and wonders follow those who preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. When you preach the gospel, signs and wonders follow. Even now, I, I feel chicken skin goosebumps Come because on. something about preaching the gospel, stepping out in faith, proclaiming the power, the name of Jesus, and God begins to back you up and show up. So the reason why a lot of people don't experience the more of God is because they're not putting their faith in action. Mm -hmm. If you want to experience miracles, yeah, yeah. step out of the boat. If you want to experience miracles, begin to share your faith. The mm -hmm. more you sow, like the evangelist said, the more you sow, the more you will reap. Faith without actions is dead. You know, I really love what you said earlier, Evangelist Matt, about, you know, evangelism. It is a public display. Of our personal love for Christ. So good. Fortunately, many people, uh, they because they are not beholding him, we are releasing negativity and evil. Remember, mm -hmm. whatever you behold, you will become. And mm -hmm. whatever you look at, you will reflect. Yeah. So a lot of people are looking, in a sense, at the wrong Jesus. Yeah. People whew, are, are worshiping a Come certain on. doctrine and idea of God, but they're actually reflecting out bitterness and anger and hatred, and they're beating people up with the Bible. Mm -hmm. So what God are you looking at? What Jesus are you looking at? Are you looking at a God, at a father that is absent? Mm -hmm. Are you looking at a father that is always disciplining you and punishing you and is angry at you and yells at you and abuses you and shouts at you? Are you looking at an angry God or are you looking at a father, a God who sent his one and only son because he loves you unconditionally? And once again, I think people's form of evangelism is, is wrong or ineffective 
mm-hmm. because of their view and how they're actually looking at God. Yeah. So I believe we need to repent. Yeah. And we need to see God in a different light, which is really seeing Jesus. So talk about yeah. that because unfortunately, uh, people are ineffective because they don't really know God. So yeah. how, how do we repent and how do we shift and change our understanding and our view of who the real Jesus is? So good, man. I think it's understand that humility, we need to clothe ourselves with humility because humility draws God. Pride repels God. You know, if we learn how to host the presence of God in private, we'll carry the real power of God in public. When we spend time with God in the secret place, he then deposits his power in us. The Bible tells us that we need to we need to have a like the secret place. We need to abide under the shadows of the almighty. When we dwell in the secret place, that is when we'll, we have a character that truly reflects his character. He molds us and shapes us into who he's called us to be. And out of that place, like I said, flows everything else. And so we need to understand that the greatest ability we have is to be with Jesus. The greatest ability we have is to be with him, you know, and out of that place, that's when the evangelist, he comes with an urgency of the word. You know, he, the evangelist comes with such an, uh, a sense of urgency because he believes in hell. He believes in eternity. He believes in judgment. He understands why the word says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Now is a day of salvation. You know, Paul said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So out of that place, you start to understand that souls are the heartbeat of God. And when you spend time with him in secret, he will infect you with the love for the lost. And then you'll find yourself starting to bleed for the lost. And you'll start, man, saying, I, uh, I want to populate heaven. Come on, I want to make hell empty and heaven full because I've been with Jesus and he wants souls saved. That even the one angel, he just, he celebrates. The word of God says they celebrate over one soul coming to Jesus. So I think it's first pouring into our relationship with him. You know, Leonard Ravenhill said that uh, the secret to praying is praying in secret. It's in the secret place that you begin to hear God clearly and, and start to develop such a love for the lost. Wow. You so, carry his heart. You know, I, I really feel the Holy Spirit and the witness of God on this right now because yeah. we're talking about the power to be an effective witness. But so many people watch right now, they don't even have a genuine relationship with God. They're questioning mm-hmm. their identity, their relationship. They're wavering w- between the, the world and between their call and their walk. So I really feel like right now, God wants us to pray for the people to come up higher in their understanding with God and to experience the Holy Spirit like never before. I mm-hmm. feel in the Spirit, people are asking, do I really know the right Jesus? Is yeah. there a right Jesus? Is there a wrong Jesus? You know, I, I joke about this all the time. Whenever I'm in Mexico and I say, hey, Jesus, there's five people in the church that say, hey, because, you know, there's so many people that are named Jesus. Hey, Jesus, you know, in, in the Latin American communities. But anyways, do you know the real Jesus? Not a Rastafarian Jesus. OK, not a Korean Jesus. OK, not a blue eyed, blonde haired, you know, Jesus from Europe. Not a not a Jesus you know, in the barrio of Mexico, but do you know the Jewish man? Come on. Who came as the Messiah, born of a virgin birth, who not only walked on the earth for 33 years and was crucified, but now is seated at the right hand of the Father and will soon come back again. Do you know that Jesus, that Yeshua? I want you to pray right now very quickly, Matt, for people to encounter the Lord because I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that those who are watching on the other side of the screen, that you would stir within them the desire for holiness, for purity, for intimacy with you, God. God, greater intimacy, greater boldness. Let it come out of that place of, of, uh, of being alone with you, Father. Stir within them, God. Release a hunger in their hearts for your presence and for your word. God, I pray that you would give them a new uh, hunger for your presence, a new awareness of who you are. In their life, God, I pray that you would give them a new love for your word, a new hatred for sin. God, I pray that you would in, in just ignite in them a holy fire, ignite within their heart a holy fire for the things of God. Lord, to witness to the lost, God, I pray that you would give them such passion and courage to rise up, to rise above apathy, to rise above complacency, to rise above instability, to rise above compromise, insecurity, rise above fear. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. And I pray now that you would mark them 
with boldness. Mark them with courage. Anoint them with your holy oil. Stamp them with your stamp of approval, God. I thank you for their life, God, and I pray that you would raise them up and move them beyond their boundaries, God. And I pray that you would shake them to their core, shake every complacency, God. I pray that when they come across people in public, that they cannot help but to prophesy. And God, I pray that you would just, you would make them, God, so uh, so hungry for souls that wherever they are, they would just start flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. Give them ears to hear and eyes to see, God. Words of knowledge, God. Let the healing flow. God, as Leonard, Raven, Leonard Ravenhill said, that the world out there is not looking for a new definition of Christianity. They're looking for a new demonstration of Christianity. Let them demonstrate your power, demonstrate your love to understand that the Great Commission is not a great suggestion. It is a command and you have commanded us. So you expect us to rise up, God. So I thank you right now. And I pray in the name of Jesus that they would understand that they they are not just some congregant, some church member. They are soldiers in the army of the living Savior. So God infuse within them confidence to know who they are in you today so that they can go out and, and, and be effective for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Wow, hallelujah. Matt, I just feel the commissioning power of God. You know, I love what you said earlier. It's not a suggestion, but it's a great commandment. It's the last commandment that Jesus gave in Matthew 28 before he ascended at the Mount of Olives. It's a commandment. Are you obeying the commandments of Jesus? Come now, on. let me ask you this. If you are with your father in his deathbed, and your father is about to go home and die, and you love your dad, you love your papa, and uh, he's about to go home, and what would his last words be? This is the last words of Jesus on earth. Yeah. If you love me, you will obey me. Preach the gospel to all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go to the ends of the earth. I feel right now that God is commissioning people in their callings and their destinies to share the gospel to their friends, neighbors, to the nations. Listen, I've been to 50 countries in the last 10 years. I know Evangelist Matt, you've traveled, you've traveled across America. But we believe that all of America shall be saved. Are you fulfilling the great commandment? But I'm sure right now, Evangelist, people are watching and saying, I'm shy. Uh, you know, uh, I'm shy. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. What do I do? What do I say? I, I'm afraid. I don't want to talk to people. You know, we need to wear masks. You know, COVID-19 right now. So I'm sure so many people are, are thinking these things. But what is your encouragement to those people who want to become a powerful witness right now? Yeah, great question, Ben. I think it's knowing uh, how to break the ice, you know, Um and then go into the message of the kingdom. You know, you don't just go up to people and just start preaching at them, speaking in tongues all over them, you know. Love them where they're at. Ask them their name, you know. Talk about, you know, the weather for the day. And for example, when I'm in an Uber, I get the guy's name. I say, how you doing? How long you been driving for Uber? You know, where are you from? I break the ice before I go into a conversation starter into the gospel message. So, for example, you can say things like, are you a religious person? Are you a believer? You know, do you know how to have a relationship with God? You know, do you did you grow up in church? What were you taught about God growing up? Do you still believe that? These are conversation starters. May I pray for you? Do you have any special needs I can pray for? You know, or a good one for the time that we live in now is what do you think the solution to what's going on in the world right now is? That's a good one. Do you have time for a short story? It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, and I love to tell people about it. These are conversation starters, but how to witness is very simple. Three quick things. Number one, you just give a brief description of what your life was like before Christ. Number two, you just describe how God spoke to your heart and opened your eyes to spiritual truth. And you can include the basic facts of the gospel and your response of faith. And then lastly, number three, uh, number three, very simple, is finally share how your life has changed since receiving the forgiveness available in Christ. So number one, you just share, you know, a brief description of what your life was like before you came to Jesus. Number two, talk about how God opened your eyes, how you experienced a spiritual awakening in your heart. And number three, just talk about how it's impacted you since then. Three simple keys right there. That'll help you. But first, break the ice by talking to them, getting their name, making them feel comfortable, and then go into a conversation starter of, hey, are you a religious person? Do you know how to have a relationship with God? What were you taught about God growing up? Do you still believe that? You know, stuff like that. These are just simple ways that, you know, start a conversation that really matters. And once you do it, you'd be surprised that the Holy Spirit will use you. Incredible, Matt. You know, I think the first thing that we as people, we need to get over is the awkwardness. Yeah. You know, just get used to the awkwardness. 
uh, just get used to dying to your pride. Like I remember one of my mentors before he said, uh, what's the, what's the worst thing you could lose? It's your pride. And so what's the worst thing you could lose? So what, who cares what people think about you or say about you or in a crowd, who cares? Lose your pride to Jesus, carry your cross and watch what happens. And that boldness and the power will come upon you and you will be a testimony. You know, that word witness in the Greek, Matt, that word witness in the Greek is martus. Okay. Mm. And that's where we get the same word martyr. Wow. So Jesus says, you will be witnesses unto me to the ends of the earth, which means you're going to be a martus or you're going to be like a martyr. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost, which means only when you die to yourself mm -hmm. can you actually carry the life of Jesus. Oh, that's so If beautiful. you've already died with me, then you can carry my abundant life Come all across the earth. And I think people have got, we need to die to ourselves in order to carry the fragrance of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. wherever we go. Matt, right now, as we're about to bring this uh, show to a close, it's so rich. I, it's so rich. I always love my broadcast with you uh, mm -hmm. because there's such rich content. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, uh, any last closing words on how people, you know, why should people be an effective witness today? Why? Why is it important for us to be a powerful witness for Christ today? Because the Great Commission is too big for me to do alone, and it's too important for us not to try to do it together. So, and in eternity is a long time to be wrong, Jesus. you know, and we've got an invitation to a, to a party of a lifetime. And so uh, we have to understand that tomorrow is not promised to no man and that Jesus paid a price for us to have eternal life. And we need to say yes to him. Uh, and it's so important because the devil wants to, God did not create hell for us. You know, he doesn't send us to hell. In fact, we send ourselves there. Mm. People say, why would a loving God send anyone to hell? But the real question is, why would anyone choose hell over a loving God? Mm. We need to say yes to Jesus because he's the only one who can truly satisfy our soul. We need a witness because people out there are in deep sin. They're, they're in you know bondages of the enemy. They're hurting and they need the answer. And we have the answer. It's Jesus. He's the hope of the world. And so we have to let what's in us manifest on the outside of us. When people meet us, they should meet him. So it's time to rise up today. Uh, we need a witness because eternity is waiting on, on more souls. Jesus, that's, it's, it's his heart, and we, ne we need to do what he's told us to do. Have him waiting. Uh, literally right now, I have tears in my eyes. I know I'm a man. Grown men do cry. Uh, but honestly, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, inspired, and I, uh, my, the fire in my bones is relit again today. I'm so blessed by our broadcast oh, today. Really. Breaker. I know you, you just uh, wrote a new book. Talk to us about this book. Where can people find it by? It? Because this book is going to change lives. And really, uh, I mean, everything we just talked about, the power to be a witness is in your book. It, it's, it's in my book. That's why I was having it right next to me. It's called God's Invitation to You from Passive Christian to Active Christian. I got to send you a signed copy. But I'm actually coming out to L.A. this Friday. So, oh. Uh, uh, but it's um, it's available on Amazon. Um, you just type in the, the title, God's Invitation to You. It'll pop up. It's available in, in the Kindle version or the paperback. There's nothing like having a uh, physical copy in your hands. Um, so and get it. Get a copy for someone else and let it bless you. You know, this book, I mean, you'll be inspired to evangelize with boldness. Uh, you'll receive breakthrough in your struggle with sin. Uh, you'll even learn the spiritual art of self-examination. Uh, and you'll find the keys to overcome doubt and apathy. And uh, you'll just be even confronted on ego and selfishness. So if you're just if you desire to break free again from habitual sin and you know walk in divine authority, finally obtain that something more in your walk with God, then this is your invitation to greater intimacy, uh, and greater boldness for evangelism, and living a life of total commitment to Christ. So get the book. I promise you, it'll help you. Again, rise above all the things I've said, apathy, compromise, complacency, and, uh, and it'll move you. As you read it, I believe the Holy Spirit will move you into what God has called you to do, and uh, you'll just be provoked to action. So it's available on Amazon. Um, God's invitation to you from passive Christian to active Christian. I believe it'll bless you. I just released it a few days ago, and I'm excited about it. I believe the Lord's going to use it for his glory. My gosh, well, aren't we blessed today already because this 
show this broadcast that has been so rich. God's invitation to you. Will you accept the call? Jesus said, the harvest is ripe, but where are the harvesters? The laborers are few. God has enlisted you into the greatest season mm. of all of Christianity. Will you resist the call or will you answer and say, what's that? People of God, this is Pastor Ben Lim with Evangelist Matt Cruz today. Thank you so much for being on. We love you. We appreciate you. Everybody, make sure you follow him and get his book. Thanks for, for being with us today. Bless you. My pleasure. Well, people of God, this is Pastor Ben. I hope you enjoyed that and you're feeling the fire in your bones. That was an incredible show today called The Power to Be an Effective Witness on the Breaker where the Lord is breaking you out of apathy, complacency, religiosity, and he's breaking you through to be a powerful witness. It was Pastor Ben Lim with Evangelist Matt Cruz on The Breaker. Thank you for watching. Until next time.